Welcome to Decide to Transform. You made it to level two. Deeper questions leading to deeper answers. I'm Tomas Garza, and I'm here to help you decide to transform. I'll be setting the pace for the process to support your unfolding. Learn and commit to a practice that brings simplicity and awareness of what is ready to be released. Join me now and allow the experience of a deeper sense of love. Welcome, welcome everyone to Decide to Transform. I am your host, Tomas Garza, and we are live here on Ohm Times Radio. I'm so delighted that you were able to join me today. We've got a wonderful show on tap for you today. And before we launch into it, I want to say a couple of words about the title. So the title is Critical Self-Care, not just self-care, but critical self-care, the art of staying calm. It's a practice, it's an art, and it's something that we don't always do as human beings in all circumstances, but it is needed, it is timely, right now more than ever. Now, the funny thing about all of this and self-care and staying calm, and I will repeat this throughout the show, because we all need to hear things dozens of times as adult learners, do we not? That was a yes. Okay. What we do here is, is we need to bring our attention to this as much as possible because it was directly relevant in the past. Staying calm, taking care of yourself and valuing and prioritizing you, yourself, and how you show up. It was relevant yesterday. It was relevant before the coronavirus outbreak. It's relevant during, it's very relevant during, and it will be relevant a year from now, 10 years from now, and on down the line. What we're going to be talking about today is in fact timeless, but the only time where you can make a decision to show up and do something about it is right now, in the present moment. Indeed, it is actually the only time that exists, literally. So what I want to do is I want to check in with you guys, okay? And I want you to ask yourself how you're doing. I hope that you're doing well. I do. I hope that you're doing well, and I hope that you're using this downtime, because for most of us, it's downtime, unless you are a healthcare worker or you work in an in essential industry. For most of us, there has been a significant disruption to our usual routine. We are not used to, many of us, staying at home. I am used to it. I work from home and online. My wife works from home and online, but you may not, and you may have experienced a significant disruption. You may not be used to spending 24 hours a day, seven days a week, indefinitely, with your kids. You may not be used to spending that time indefinitely with your spouse or your partner. All of us have had to adapt to the newness of this situation, and it's currently where we find ourselves. So there's never been a better time than right now to focus on exactly what we're going to focus on today, and that's you and your self-care and the importance and indeed the art of staying calm. So the hope that you're weathering this as well as you can, and if you're having an up and down time, join the club, really. Seriously, it's okay to have an off day because we do that in regular life, of course. It's okay to become frustrated and to get angry, to be afraid, because this is all new. And let's face it, nobody knows exactly what's coming down the pipe tomorrow. But when have we ever known? When have we ever known what exactly is going to happen? All we have is right now and this moment. So what I really hope that you do, and I will say this more than once on the broadcast today, I really hope that you give yourself some patience 
and extend yourself some grace. And while you're at it, please extend that to everyone else around you because everybody is doing the best they can under the circumstances with the tools and the experience that they have at their disposal. We have different levels of experience and my purpose today is to give you some more tools and to give you some practice practice that builds on other practice so that you can show up more calm. More, more calm. If you're already calm, that's fantastic. If you're not, and I encourage you to be honest with yourself, because you'll know if you're a nervous wreck right now, you'll know if you need help. And if you do need help, then I hope that you reach out and ask for it. And if you know of other people that need help, then I hope that you will reach out to them because it's never been more important than right now during a global pandemic to stay connected. We're not used to shelter in place orders. We're not used to being in quarantine. Most of us, I would venture to guess, are not used to that at all. Here in Arizona, we are under a current stay at home order, which is the same as a shelter in place we're ordered to stay at home for the most part and man we can go to the grocery store we can go out for walks and maybe you can too where you live but if other people around you are struggling then reach out to them and i want to stress the importance of the material that we're going to cover today on the show because if you don't have something to give how can you give it, right? How can you give calm and extend peace and exude that from your pores if you don't have the ability to get there yourself? If you don't have the tools to reset when you find yourself off track, then how can you teach others? So this is all about today adding to our repertoire. It's all about adding to our toolkit, if you will, practices for staying calm that build upon one another. And it's very, very important. So please, I invite you to stay tuned. And if you're listening to this down the line here, if you're listening to this on Apple, Spotify, Spreaker, once this gets archived, I hope that you take this to heart and that you put these tools that we're going to talk about here on the broadcast today into practice in your life. It's very, very important. So why then is it so critical? Well, it's critical because we're always teaching. This is something that is central to world spirituality. Really, it is whether a tradition says this or not, how you show up matters and they say it in different words and people are encouraged to practice this in different ways. But how you show up matters and we're always teaching and I'll explain what I mean. We're always teaching because we're energetic. We are vibrational and people relate to the vibes that you put off. That That's completely and utterly beyond dispute. If you walk into a room steaming mad, you're going to make people uncomfortable. If you walk in with a smile on your face, you'll make them happy or you will make them feel more relaxed. Are you sheltering in place with your family? Do they get on your nerves? I mean, it's okay to say yes, because of course they do. But how you show up matters and you're always teaching. So when you go deep and do the work that's required to stay calm and as level-headed as possible, and I'm not saying that you have to be totally chill. People think that I'm totally chill and I am sometimes, most of the time, really, but not always because we all have our moments. So again, give yourself some grace. And if you do this work that we're going to talk about today, you will 
send a message to everyone around you that you matter, that they themselves matter, and that self-care matters, that peace and tranquility and relative calm all matter. It matters greatly. So how do you do this? Well, meditation is one way. Now, I will share with you that it's not the only way. Personally, I have 35 years or more, I think it's now 36, roughly, years of, of formal meditation practice, which it may feel like a long time. Well, it is a long time. And that means that not only have I, I practiced it in one form or another for quite a while, it also means that I've fallen asleep during meditation many times. I have been distracted a lot of times because that kind of thing just happens. But what's important here is that it's not the only way. So I want to ask you, and I really want to have you think about this. What works for you? What makes you feel calmer? What makes you more composed? What chills you out when you're not feeling chill? Very important. If you need to de-escalate yourself or you need to reality check and give yourself a time out, what do you do? Do you go out for a walk? Do you read a book? Do you journal? Do you take a bath? Do you take up yoga? Do you practice yoga if you haven't, if you've been practicing it before? Do you work out? Do you have the ability to do workouts at home? What do you do? Do you meditate? Do you go for a swim if you're able to do that? What are you able to do right now that works for you? And whatever that is, whether it's seated meditation or not, what matters is that you take stock of this in your life and you do it. Because we're clearly, most definitely, all in this together. We're all connected. And you're always teaching. People are always learning from you and the vibes that you put out. Now, similarly, you're always learning from them. If somebody walks into a room with you and they're steaming mad, that affects you. Of course it does. Not everybody can sit completely 100% calm and composed all the time. I can't do that. No one can. It takes a lot of willpower to always remain calm, but what we can all do is we can all do the work. We can make a decision to do the work to get calmer. Now again, if you are struggling, if you personally are struggling under the current circumstances, that's perfectly okay. And what I want to do today is I want to give you some tools that will help you. And I want to, once again, encourage you to reach out and ask for help. All right. It's very, very important. It's important that you reach out and ask for help if you need it. And also if you have the help and the time and the assistance to give to someone that is struggling, I hope that you in turn will reach out to them. What I'm going to do with you on the show today is I'm going to take you through not one, not two, but three short guided meditations. And they will be short because we're on air and I don't want to have several minutes of dead air. However, you may choose to extend the practices that we're going to do. You may choose to extend them as long as you wish. And I'll explain a little bit about them. And then on the other side of a commercial break, which we'll have in a couple of minutes here, we'll practice them. These are intended to be cumulative. So today on the show, we're going to take a look at and work on basic calm abiding meditation. And I'll explain a little bit about what that is, but that's one meditation. Then we're going to focus on creating mental and emotional space for ourselves. 
during a global pandemic where you are under a stay at home order, most likely, most of you, I'm sure, it's not necessarily possible or it's very difficult. It's more difficult to create the actual physical space. So how do you create the space that really matters? And that's the internal mental, psychological, emotional, and indeed spiritual space. Why does that matter? We'll talk about that. There will be a guided meditation on creating that space for yourself. Critical now more than ever. And then the third and final guided meditation of the show will be about making different choices. Again, about how you present yourself, how you show up, and how you make different choices in the world. So very important, basic calm, abiding calm, creating space and making different choices. Each of these meditations will be just a few minutes. And again, I'm shortening them for the purposes of our broadcast today, but understand that everything that we work on today can be extended. And of course, if you have further questions about any of these practices, feel free to shoot me an email Tomas at TomasGarza.com. And if this is the first time that you're tuning into the show, it's Tomas, T-O-M-A-S. There is no H. And I invite your questions. I do. It's very, very good. It's wonderful for me to hear from each of you. So on the other side of a commercial break that we'll take here right now, we will go through guided meditations and tools that you can put to use to show up differently and to make different choices. Stick around, we will be right back. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at omtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, I'm Tomas Garza, author of Decide and host of Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. I want to ask you, if you want something in life, have you decided on it? If not, you'll listen to a limiting story about yourself. You will say you can't, you're too old, too young, etc. Decide to transform in life. Learn what you can choose to believe instead of your limiting stories. Decide. Available now in paperback and ebook. Did you know that you have the power to change anything in your life? Did you know you can do so even with the things that you've already decided are impossible to change? Come join me, Venus Castleberg, on Outside the Impossible as I interview people from around the globe that have literally changed the things they thought were impossible to change just by using the amazing tools of Access Consciousness. Now airing Wednesdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Do you dare to believe that anything really is possible? A social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part, because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back to Decide to Transform. I'm your host, Tomas Garza, and thank you for tuning in with us today on Ohm Times Radio. We are looking at critical self-care, the art of staying calm. 
that's an art, it's a practice, and nobody does it perfectly 100% of the time, which is a good thing. And what we want to do today here is I'm going to take you through three guided meditations, and I'm going to tell you a very funny story about myself in the process. So wherever you are, wherever you're listening from, to the extent that's possible, if you're driving a car, then I don't recommend that you do any of this in particular unless you pull over. Okay, so wherever you are, get comfortable if you want to grab a cup of tea and get yourself comfortable, cozy, in a nice space. We're going to be doing a little bit of deeper work here today. And if you've never done guided meditations before, then welcome. We'll take you through some of them today, three of them in particular, and they're going to be short. They'll be brief. If you're familiar with this type of practice, again, feel welcome to extend it however long that you want to. In fact, you could, if you want to, sit and meditate all day. And I, you know, unless you're on a retreat and environment, that can be not the easiest thing in the world to do. However, I will share with you that you can get tremendous benefit from very, very short practices, as short even as one single breath. A successful meditation is as short as one breath. If you are present, if you pay attention to that, that's a meditation. Really. So that means throw out the argument that you don't have time because you all have time for the next breath. You just took it, right? We all did. So here's what we do. We get comfortable here, and the first guided meditation is going to be about calm abiding. And I use the term calm abiding. It stems directly from Buddhism, where in Tibetan Buddhism, at least there is a meditation practice called shamatha, which is calm abiding. And I've practiced Tibetan Buddhism for many years. In fact, when I first was introduced to shamatha practice, I had already been meditating in one form or another for about 12 or 13 years. And that meant, of course, that with 12 or 13 years experience, I thought I was just an expert. <laughs> Not so. Not so, of course. This It's very interesting because I remember having a question in my mind, and I began to practice shamatha meditation, calm abiding meditation in a group setting, in fact, which was new to me, in a group setting at Kagyu Changchub Chuling in Portland, Oregon with Lama Michael Conklin, who was my teacher at the time. This was a practice that was both new, it was both new and not new to me. The group setting was new and we had questions and answers. And the question that I had that I was too afraid to ask was, why are we doing this? <laughs> I mean, why are we just sitting here for 30, 40, 45 minutes watching our breath? Why? And somebody had the courage, I was so glad, somebody had the courage to raise their hand in the question and answer period afterwards and say, hey, what's this all about? Why are we doing that? So if you're asking this question, excellent. It's an excellent question. Here's why. We open up space for ourselves to make different decisions. And that's a meditation that we'll do in a little while here. But let's practice bringing that awareness to your breath. You can do this with any object. Let's do this here and get comfortable. We're going to start a guided meditation. And for the purposes of the show today, I'm just going to talk. I'm going to talk in a little bit slower guided meditation voice. And I'm not going to leave dead air, understand that I'm shortening these practices for the purposes of the show. So get comfortable. If you're lying down, that's fine. If you're seated, that's fine. You can be standing if you wish. Wherever you are, 
If you want to close your eyes, then I invite you to close your eyes. And if you choose to leave them open, that is fine. And pay attention to your breath. It's always going on, we hope, whether we're aware of that or not. So take an in-breath and pay attention to the air filling your body, to your lungs and your diaphragm expanding. And as you exhale, pay attention to your exhale and feel and watch the air go out of you and breathe in and out. And as we do, just place your awareness on the in-breath and the out-breath and the physical sensations that the air makes entering and leaving the body. Pay attention to the expansion and contraction of your lungs, of your diaphragm, and wherever you are, sit quietly and observe your breath. So, when your mind wanders off, when you start thinking about dinner tonight or something that happened last week, maybe the future, simply bring your awareness back to the breath. That is all. It is all you need to do to be fully complete, calm, and present in this moment. Simply allow the thoughts to disappear when you notice that you've been distracted, which will happen. And pay attention to the breath. Take one more in and out breath. And if your eyes are closed, go ahead and open them. If they're open, keep them open. And as we come out of this first meditation, pay attention to how you're feeling. Let's check in as I begin to resume a more normal on the air radio voice here. Coming out of the meditation, how are you feeling? Did you feel more relaxed and do you now feel more relaxed? There are multiple scientific studies and books that have to do with the physical effects of meditation practice, much like the one that we just did. This is perhaps the best known and among the most basic meditation practices that there are, there's simple focus on the breath, shamatha in Tibetan Buddhism, calm abiding, whatever you want to call it, and whatever spiritual tradition you practice, this can be done by anybody worldwide at any time. And pay attention to how you feel. If you're feeling any differently right now, this is great. Pay attention to that because the breath and paying attention to our breath helps center us. And in the second meditation, we'll begin to experience more of what I mean by space to create a better life to transform and to make better decisions right now in the present moment. This is 
we just worked on it. This is the building block to all meditation practices in any tradition. And again, I remind you, this can be as short as one breath. So what, what's in it for you? I love that question. I really do. I love that question. I know some people cringe, but shouldn't you ask that? Okay, why is this going to benefit me? How is this going to benefit me? Why should I pay attention to this? Well, stick around for the second guided meditation that we're going to do in a minute, and I'll tell you why you should and must actually pay attention to this. We said it at the top of the show, how you show up matters. If you show up calmer, what's more likely to happen? Will you fly off the handle at your spouse or your kids in 15 minutes? Or will you act differently? Will you react differently? Will you open up some mental space so that you can make a different decision? So that when, not if, but when you are triggered, as you will be in human life, you will be. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but sometime. How will you react? This is what I mean by creating space and opening up space in your life. So I hope you haven't gone far from your comfortable seat from where you last were, because I'm going to invite you to join me on the second guided meditation and to get comfortable if you need to take another sip of tea or whatever it is that you're drinking, it may not be tea. I don't know. You might be drinking tequila right now. And if you are, that's great. <laughs> Wherever you are, just get comfortable again. And if you had your eyes closed during the last meditation, then do that again, whatever feels comfortable for you. They do not need to be closed in order for you to have the full experience. So as I just did, I will begin to slow my speaking voice for a, a guided meditation. And I remind you that you are welcome to extend this practice beyond the two or three minutes that we'll have to work on it here on the show. So let's start where we were before with an in-breath and pay attention as we did a moment ago to the air filling your lungs and expanding your diaphragm, entering your body and pay attention to your exhale breath. And again, observe how you feel in the moment and whether you feel any more relaxed. If you do, wonderful. And if you do not, then take another breath and observe. It is very important for us to observe as we breathe in and out how we feel, to notice how we feel and to notice the effects that our thoughts have in our physical body. Calming thoughts relaxes. And continue to breathe in and out. And remind yourself that you are creating space for yourself. You can choose differently. You can respond differently to situations. 
emotions. And as you breathe in and out, what area of your life can you make a change in? However small, it's still a change. It's still valid and it still matters. How can you respond to a stressful situation differently? And as you breathe in and out, I invite you to examine this. And whatever comes to mind, trust that that was meant to come to mind. And it is 100% valid. And as we prepare to come out of the meditation, take one more in and out breath. And if your eyes are closed, feel welcome to open them. So we've just undergone two guided meditations. First, basic calm abiding. Second, creating space. And hold in your mind whatever it is that you just thought of that you could change about how you respond to situations. And trust again that that was what was meant to come up. And put that into practice. So, on the other side of our next commercial break, we will go through guided meditation number three for today about making different choices. So, if you need something to drink or you need a stretch break, let's do that right now. We'll be back in a couple of minutes for another guided meditation here on Decide to Transform. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Hi, I'm Tomas Garza, host of Decide to Transform on Home Times Radio. Thank you for listening. You know, there's only so much we can cover on a one-hour show. If you'd like to hear further from me, I happily offer personalized teachings. Get your very own voice recording or book a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Ask a burning question and gain clarity on achieving massive transformation in your life. Details available on my website, tomasgarza.com. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. I'm Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family. And then, boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle you to America, and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council.
Welcome back to Decide to Transform. I'm your host, Tomas Garza, and you're listening to Critical Self-Care, The Art of Staying Calm, right here on Ohm Times Radio. Now, I hope you've been enjoying the guided meditations. We've done two so far on the broadcast, and there's one more in store for us here during our last 20 minutes together. We have gone over some of the very basics of meditation and my purpose in sharing these with you today worldwide is that you might be able to take some tools and some practices that you can put immediately to work in your daily life. And because it's true that a successful meditation can be as short as one single in and out breath, just one. I know that everybody can do this. We've talked a little bit about some of the benefits of remaining calm and creating mental space for yourself so that you can make different decisions, so that you can choose differently. Because in a calm space, we reorder our lives. It may not feel like it, and this is very easy for people to dismiss if you're carried away in the world, if you're carried away in your news feed on social media, or if you've been watching too much TV, you know who you are. And you may know, if you have not been, you most certainly will know people that are. And you can still show up as calm as you can possibly be in the moment and you will still be demonstrating. You will still be teaching to them, even though you cannot control what they say and do, you will still be demonstrating that you're worth the time for the self-care and that you're showing up calm and strong and at peace as much as you can possibly do in the moment. Again, please give yourself some grace for when you get stressed out, not if, when. Because we're all human and the range of emotions is wild sometimes. It is, it is for everybody. So please put into practice the very basics of taking in a single breath and paying attention to it and exhaling then you can go about life with more oxygen to the brain for better choices, for more mental and emotional space to make better choices so that our knee-jerk reactions don't come up as quickly. Your knee-jerk reaction might be really, really damaging to yourself and others. And this is all a matter of looking within and personal observation. How do you react to stressful situations? Do you tend to get very anxious very quickly? Do you tend to panic? Do you lash out at people? Do you say things that you might regret saying and that you don't mean? All right, we all do from time to time, but in putting these practices into action in your daily life, they're very easy to do and the benefits are monumental. They're game changers. They're quite literally game changers and they can reorder your entire life and the lives of everyone else around you. And they can do it in a very positive, meaningful way. And that's why I'm going through this with all of you right now. This is timeless. It's relevant. It was relevant years ago. It's relevant now. It will be relevant years from now. It's always important. So I hope that you've taken the commercial break here recently to get comfortable again. And wherever you are, if you're seated, if you are standing or lying down, now I have tried to meditate in my years of experience lying down. I've done some successful meditations lying down and I've also fallen asleep lying down. And if this broadcast causes you to fall asleep, you know what? I'll never know. <laughs> and that's perfectly okay. 
say that that was what was meant to happen for you and that you needed that because this should be deeply relaxing. So wherever you are, we're going to do a third guided meditation here about making different choices in life. This is the benefit and the direct result of creating mental and psychological emotional space. We can choose differently. So I invite you before we enter the guided meditation to think about what's no longer serving you that you're bringing to the table. Let's examine ourselves here. What habit do you have that's not serving you? This could be a knee-jerk reaction to situations. It could be your response to stress. Whatever that is, let's think about that. And whatever comes to mind, let's hold that in mind because we're going to work on it here. So if you had your eyes closed and you like meditating that way, feel free. You can keep your eyes open if you want, but wherever you are, please just get as comfortable as you can, whether you're seated or lying down or standing up. Wherever you are, let's go back into a meditation. And again, I will speak more slowly, but without dead air. And again, you can extend these practices for as long as you like. We'll just go for another couple of minutes here. So wherever you are, go ahead and let's begin with focusing on one complete breath. Always the foundation. Inhale, pay attention to the breath entering your body and then as you exhale pay attention to the breath exiting the body and please continue to breathe in this space understand that you have infinite power you have the power to choose. Each of us has and retains a fundamental strength and power, and that is the power of decision in every moment. Are you choosing your own power, or are you giving it away? If you know an area of your life where you are giving it away, then let's work on that right now, today. Tell yourself that you are powerful as you breathe in. I am powerful. I am calm. I am loving. I have this under control. I got this. And continue to breathe normally in and out. And remind yourself you are powerful. You have the power of decision. It is yours. You own it. 
that's yours right now, right here. And continue breathing. And again, if you find yourself thinking about something completely different, that's all right. Just bring your attention back to the breath and take one more in and out breath. And then we'll talk about this. All right. So as you come out of the meditation, a couple of points that I want to bring up. Number one, pay attention to how this makes you feel. And if you notice, and I hope that you do, if you notice that you feel relaxed and more composed, then it would be very kind of you to please put this into practice, and not just for yourself, but for the benefit of the entire world, really, because we are all connected and how we show up in life matters and it matters greatly. In fact, it's critical that in your day, that to the extent that you can, that you catch yourself going off track, that you catch yourself indulging habitual knee-jerk reactions. Practices such as meditation are designed to help develop new habits. And it's very important that we all work on what we've just worked on during this hour. Calmness, creating space, and making different choices. Because we can reorder our lives right here, today, right now. And a message that I would have for you after having gone through these meditations with you is that feel welcome to extend these. And if you don't believe any of the statements that we just worked on, such as I have the power of decision, you do. You do have the power of decision. If you don't feel that you are all powerful, that's okay. You can continue to recite that because you do retain the most important power of all, and that is your free will to choose right now. And you may see, depending on the people that you follow on social media or the news that you watch or read or listen to, you may see a lot of people with a lot of uplifting statements. And you may see a lot of negativity. And you can choose what you choose to put in your mind. What you consume, in media terms, is important and it matters. So whatever you do, I invite you to consider that. And I want to leave you with the notion, and I really hope that you put it into practice, it's okay to take care of yourself. I know many of us are in a caregiving role, that we're teachers, we may be parents, uh, maybe you're a doctor, a nurse, a caregiver in another capacity, and maybe you are providing that emotional support for people. In whatever capacity you're doing this, it's okay to take care of yourself and please do that. I insist. I do. I insist that you do this because if you do not take care of yourself, then you will not have the positivity. You will not have the calm and the composure to give. And people will not get the message from you that everything is going to be okay. They will not feel calm in your presence if you do not take the steps and make the effort to feel calm and be calm yourself. Because you are 100% worth it, and so is everyone else. How we show up matters, and you are always teaching, so please, please, 
if you do nothing else, teach calmness and teach love. Show love, peace and calm and extend that. This is not something reserved for Buddhist monks high in the Himalayas. It's relevant right here in the 21st century, wherever you find yourself. So in closing, let me just say that I invite your questions and comments and feel welcome, please, to email me, tomas at tomasgarza.com, if you have particular questions or you have specific questions for the show. Next week, we'll be talking about healing on the show on here on Decide to Transform. We'll be talking about the practice and the art of healing. And you'll want to stay tuned for that because it's very much of the mind and it's very much something that you can do right now, today, like these meditations. Everyone stay safe, stay calm and composed, and we'll see you next week here on Decide to Transform. Thank you for listening.